Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to do another video of checking out one of your guys' solar systems and today's system is from the user TechSnack in Discord so massive thank you to them for sending their system and their system here is called the Very Hungry Space Whale this, uh, this should be interesting so without further ado, let's get into this, it should already be for us it has got, it's got a special thumbnail, you can see there's a lot of teeth there so let's go ahead and uh, <laughs> see what they prepared for us here. Right. Okay. Whoa. Are we in the jaws of it already? What is going on here? Look, let's just turn that off. What in the world is going on here? What? Oh, that's so weird. Okay, what is going on? That's a lot of very big teeth. Okay. <laughs> this is very unique already. Emergency, emergency. This is a record message... Brought to you by the Shroomites, an intelligent fungal species whose home system is about to be potentially swallowed by a space well we've dubbed Gary. We've created this in order to preserve the memory of our home in case the plan fails. Right, so Gary. Three months ago, our telescopes picked a large mass headed towards our system. We previously assumed it um, was a dust cloud, but it wasn't until two months later that we noticed the strange shape of the object. A space well that's chosen the Warwick system as its next meal. Gary reaches a tremendous size spanning 1,200 AU in radius. Its small tooth is a thousand times bigger than our star. Oh my god. Right, so what's going on here? Is that, is it? Oh my gosh. What the heck is this? What? Look at those teeth. That is awesome. Look at that. Let's just get a flashlight. Look at that. That is a lot of hungry teeth. Oh my god. What's that weapon over there? That's going to blow up. It's a timed explosion if we press play. Oh my god. That is terrifying. We're just going, we need to go on the surface of a planet here. This is a very unique kind of system. What the heck? Right, so the star. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, get to the star. Right. So this is the star itself in the middle. This is a bizarre. I mean, this is this is fantastic stuff. Right, so there it is. Uh, can we go on orbit? Some, okay, there he is. Right. So star itself. Uh, an A-type star which shines upon the system, unfortunately catching the eye of Gary. It is. First of the planets. This is a very unique idea. I mean, bonus points for this already, because this is fantastic. There's a planet. Look at that. <laughs> it's just teeth everywhere. Let's just land on the surface. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, this is just your local star. And then you look behind, and you're like, oh, my God. That's a lot of teeth. Oh, <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. Right. Uh, this one is a dwarf planet, tightly locked, Warwick. It's mildly crater and has an orbit eccentricity of 0 0.11. Okay. Next planet out. Uh, Hartilis here. Only being a tad smaller than Mars, this world is very desert-like in appearance. And from the surface, besides the moons, this was our very first space colony. Excellent. Got some lights on it. Very nice. Uh, next up, we have got um, Scar over here. The airless rock, colour brown, red and yellow from its composition. Nothing else interesting here. I like how it's just a normal system now, even though we're in the mouth of a space whale thing. <laughs> uh, Gron Gronjo's here. There it is. Our home world, dominated by ecosystems with beautiful fungi and oceans coloured red due to the high iron levels in it. Unfortunately, the planet and the rest of the system might not see another day if Gary consumes it all, which he probably will, unless that weapon thing does anything. It's got two moons. So we've got uh, one of the two moons, a pearly white gem shiny upon the fungal life down below. It's the closest orbit in moon. Mitos is the bigger one, which is here. This moon has a similar composition to Scar and therefore gives it similar colours. We aren't sure how this happened as the moon is inclined to the same as Gen, implying they both form together. Hopefully it won't become a mystery to never be solved. Okay. Oh, it's so weird. It's being eclipsed by the planet behind the star as well. Nice. Turn the goggles off. Can we see? Oh, yeah. There's a big load of teeth, though. Next up, we have got this one here. q -Wicken. This planet has a thin nitrogen atmosphere, as well as nitrogen and methane and ice on its surface. These elements have given the planet its pale green, dark red, brown colours. It's also decently cratered. There it is. Looking good. God, there's just the, the starlight in the mouth. Just makes it even more spooky if you put it on the realistic light. If we put that on... It's a little lighter, isn't it? But there's just teeth everywhere in the darkness. It's huge in the depth, the shadow of space. You can just see him there. Oh my gosh. What an idea this is. Right. Um, so we've just done that one. Next up, we're going to UT, which is this thing here. Very dark. There it is. 
Lurking in the Astro Belt that stretches from 5.5 to 11 AU. This barren world is a dwarf planet that's only distinctive feature is its light brown colour. Okay. Then we have Jartu, the dominant gas giant. There it is there. Ooh, yes. Tidal forces on the surface cause the moon to vomit. Oh, hang on, I'm reading the wrong thing. That's the first moon. The dominant gas giant. Its main bands are faint yellow with three, three darker bands each time up within the equator. It also supports the biggest ring in the system and contains five major moons. Excellent. So here's La Lali. The tidal forces of the moon cause the moon to vomit up a ton of sulfur, coated in a yassi yellow. It's the second most technology active body, beaten by uh, magma. So that's your IO equivalent. Uh, next up, we're heading to Curso over here. The surface is barren, extremely low on any kind of material. It's mostly sandy yellow with patches of orange in its cratered areas. Not the most interesting place. This one here. Fit Fertalve. Slightly green in colour. This moon holds the third densest atmosphere in the system and is primarily coated with CO2. It's the largest moon, a bit smaller than what Ganymede is. Okay. Gold round. The surface is covered in a sheet of gold and iron oxides, making this place quite the valuable place of mining. Okay. And then magma, which is the most active moon over there. It looks like it's glowing hot, is it? Oh yes. Oh my god, look at this whole thing is red. Hot rocks, surface, and magma for oceans. What strange on its age, it should have cooled off by now. Yes, it hasn't. It couldn't receive lots of tidal heating from Jartu as it's too far. It was discovered that the moon was made of some kind of new extreme metal, which was later used to build the weapon in order to stop Gary. Okay, so we've already seen a little tease to that thing we saw at the beginning. The weapon. So that's got a very special metal. Okay. Right, so moving on. To the... Uh, we're on the edge of the teeth now. We're just on the edge of his mouth, entering this, this is Munichus here, next gas giant out. A dull grey gas giant that ironically hosts the most interesting moons. So we've got Safin over here. A land of circular shaped worlds, or shaped islands, with a liquid sulphur ocean, as well as in a sulphur atmosphere. It's unclear how exactly this world came to be. We've got Zav over here. Dead, blank, and icy. This world is a barren ice moon, but if the system survives, Gary and the star lives to grow older, the moon can melt into a life world. Nice. Then we got Lolo. Lo, lo. A world of an ammonia atmosphere and frozen amino lakes. Exotic bacteria sit between these lakes, frozen in time until the lake melts into liquid. Okay. Now we're taking a big jump out to an area outside of the teeth. We can get to it. So, Bull and Astagoo Barry Center? Okay, so... Or Bale, that's what it says, Bale, not Bull. <laughs> Bale? This planet and the other one are a set of ice giants in the binary. Bale itself is lighter blue and its partner has white poles. It is also the faster wind speeds out of all the planets. Nice, right, getting a bit dark over here. Okay, got a flashlight, I guess, so we can see everything. And those big teeth. There it is. Nice looking gas giant. And then the other planet is here. There it is. Obviously very similar, has a little moon, this one, Marth. The moon itself is a typical ice world, but it's unknown this object was captured by the gravity or form with it. Okay. Next up we've got Idod. Is that the next... Uh... So this one is outside the teeth completely now. There it is. Oh, go over to it. There's an escape fleet over there. Okay, so here it is, last of the planets. It's complete darkness here. Purple in colour. There you go. An ice giant, or ice dwarf, that formed with the, the ring-like design of the system's ice belt only contains to well, only 50 to 60 AU in thickness. It contains the most major moons in the system and is coloured in a deep purple due to the large amount of iodine in its composition. Nice, so there it is. Right, first of the moons. Very dark. If I turn that damn automatic thing off, it's really annoying. Um, oh, stop doing it. So, Gothet here. Oh, that's so annoying. Uh, the Dark Ice Moon of a Low Albedo, the umbral analogue of the system. Nice, don't see many references to the moons of Uranus very often in these. Uh, Rivania. Once a star is a red giant, this moon will melt into an ocean world. What's more, the dormant bacteria in the ice will turn oceans into purple colour. Nice. Tuco. Airless snowball, its surface is lightly cratered. Not much going on here. Turtops over here. The moon will melt during the star's red giant phase, except Turtops has less water. So many tropical islands will end up forming. Nice. Then we got Love. 
which is all that is that Laz? Not sure if that's it. This one is called Lav, but it says Lav here. Laz, sorry. A small major moon that doesn't have a lot going on except its deep aqua blue coloured surface. I think I can sort of see it there actually. Yeah, it must be that one. And then lastly, four four bow over here. This tiny like lav has a brownish coloration and also highly mountainous. Nice. Right. So moving on. That's the planets. So we've got the escape fleet over here. Let's have a little look here. So these are ships escaping. Mothership orbiter and the motherships. And they're escaping the the whale of teeth. Very spooky. Okay. So these ships contain most of the Shumite population. If the weapon doesn't scare off Gary, this is plan B. The ships consist of three smaller orbiters that are rolled around their central mothership, which is twice the size of the moon. They travel to a new system in order to re-establish civilization, but only if that happens if the weapon fails. So the weapon... An enormous bomb that acts almost like a star. So here it is. It's got two seconds till detonation when we press play. It'll be hard to select it. Something tells me this may not work. But that's the weapon there. It was previously enveloped in a shell made of magma's metal, but now, but now it has shredded it and now stands close to Gary's left eye. About to explode. Hopefully Alar and him are scaring him off before he eats the system. Oh my god. So, can we select the... Oh gosh, what, what's going on? Oh, what the heck? There it is. So, weapon, here it is. Right. Want to see it how it unfolds? Press play and find out. Okay, so... There we go. It's detonating. Detonation. It's gone. So Gary is still there. There he is. It's right near his eye. Where's that explosion? Did it work? There it is. It has created an explosion right near his eye. There you go. Oh my god. Now let's see what he does. The mothership's escaping. There you go. <laughs> That's getting out of there. So the system has been abandoned. There's the Nova. Right in his face. Is that going to scare him off? The system does not look good. Looks like the weapon has failed. It's going to make the system be destroyed. Oh, gosh. Oh, the whale's going to be... <laughs> He's been blown up as well. Oh, no. This... Oh, dear. Okay, the whale is not having a good day. That's probably killed him. Or has it? Or oh, then maybe it didn't work. <laughs> is the whale stuck in place or does he move? Where did the mothership go? Is that in the explosion or did it get out of there? Oh, the mothership is long gone. Yeah, so they escaped. So it looks like the whale didn't get too... He did get pretty hot, but did that kill him? Is that just a floating corpse now? Is it still alive? He is moving. So we're still in the mouth underneath those teeth. Let's speed up time, see what happens. Is he going to eat it? Maybe it takes a while, a long time to move. This is the fastest we can go. Is he moving? He's losing speed. Maybe, maybe he is. I don't know. I don't think position locks on him, is it? Pull others, pull by others. He does have effect. How much mass does he have? Doesn't have a lot of mass. Maybe he isn't powerful enough to... Uh... The system doesn't seem to be moving. Ooga. He did get pretty blown up, though, by that Nova. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. That is a bizarre, uh, bizarre fate, though. <laughs> I mean, he hasn't eaten it, but we're still in his mouth. Maybe he just got blown up. I mean, the system seems to be orbiting just as it was. I mean, Whale doesn't seem to... I mean, if I speed him up, is he going to move at all if I... Just, you know. Okay, so there we go. We sped it up so that we just increase his speed. So he is looking like he's going to eat the system then, is he? I don't know. Oh my god. He's going into the jaws. He's going to get eaten. Okay, the system's not being destroyed, but I think that counts as being eaten. <laughs> he's in his belly. This was, he's eating it. Oh, surely, yeah. Ah. Is he designed? Is it, can he collide with others or collide with other? Oh, if I turn it on, he ate them. <laughs> okay, so 
I don't think the weapon worked. I think we can conclude that. And the game has crashed. I think. The game is frozen. Oh dear. I think that... Oh yeah, we're gone. We've, we've broken it. <laughs> well, on that bombshell, everybody. Hope you all enjoyed it. I mean, Texanek, that was a very, very interesting system. Really enjoyed that. I like the concept. Um, unfortunately, the system was eaten. The weapon didn't blow him up and he... Uh, obviously, we sped him up a little bit just to get the speed going. Because the system won't run that fast. But... I think the whale got away with it. They did escape, though, so it's just the system was destroyed. But um, other than that, everybody, if you enjoyed it, hit that like button. See if we can go for 150 likes on today's video for the killer whale. Quite literally. Or Gary. Let us know what you think down below in the comments. I thought that was a really unique system. Very, very nice indeed. And yeah, that will send on everybody. Subscribe with as well. Helps on the journey to 50,000 subscribers. And with that, we'll send on everybody. Make sure you stay safe out there. Have a great day. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.